How's it going everybody? It's JDM Drifter and for today's video I'm going to be doing something different that I've not done yet on my channel. I'm going to be restoring this vintage Tootsie Toy Fire Chief Ford Bronco. Now I've promised you guys in the past I would start doing some custom tutorials or restorations and I'm going to be starting it off with something that I've not seen too many people actually attempt to restore which is a Tootsie Toys die cast. I've had this car for a long time. I'm not sure exactly where this came from and I just recently found it in a box of some old cars that I had and I remember I had it outside just sitting in the dirt for a while so this is exactly how I just found it in my box and how it was originally and as you can see most of the paints off um, there's some imperfections that are going to need filled I'm also going to attempt to remake the fire chief decals that were on the doors as you can see some of the old residue of it's overall actually in pretty solid condition besides the main issue is right here on the base where the axle is broken off so I'd have to repair that later and I will take you guys step by step on how I'm going to restore this Tootsie toy and this is also my first attempt on restoring one of these cars these are also made in Chicago, USA. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of what this looked like original. And also, these don't go for that much on eBay. I see them going for as low as $5 in about the same condition. So this would definitely be a good starter piece to restore. It's a very cheap price, very simple, not much to it. And yeah, it would be a good thing to practice restoring on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart, and then I'm going to clean up all the parts and then see what we have to work with. So I took it apart off camera. This was actually probably going to be the hardest part of the restoration was trying to pry this apart. These are stuck together pretty good. So I just used a flat ended screwdriver. I just pried it apart and then I just slid the base forward. Because as you can see, the back part of the base uh, goes over here. And I also did notice it is smashed in a little back here. So I will hit that out later. And as you can see, lots of mud and dirt is falling out of this car. So this definitely needs a wash and cleaned up. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this down with some soap and water. And then we will see what the condition of the plastic is in and if it will need repainted or anything. All right, so here's how it looks after I washed it down with some soap and water. I didn't scrub it all the way. Just got most of the dirt on top of it off. I do have to clean out the dirt down here by the seat and some stuff down here under the interior. And I also need to remove the wheels. Now, I think the main interior part here is a nice white, but the front, I think I am going to end up respraying. I'm going to file it down and smooth it out, and I'm going to end up respraying that. And also, I am going to paint the tires black again, and then the rims, I'm going to end up painting them, I think, white again as well and here's how the body looked after i washed it not a lot of paint left a little bit of sticker residue little dent it back here it's got a tow hitch and i can tell there's a couple little imperfections that are going to need filled in later as well now i want to go ahead and remove these axles from the interior so hopefully these will just pop out i might do it off camera just so i can make sure i can get these out safely and then i will come back so I removed the axles from the interior part. Here's how the front axle looks. It's got a little bit of corrosion on it, not any rust really. I thought that when I was taking this off, and I was very careful at removing these, so what I did is I just carefully lifted up and not twist it to the side so it wouldn't snap. But it turns out actually that, as you can see, there is some discoloration and like kind of dirt looking here. This had actually been broken in the past as well, like the back. And as you can see, the back was probably glued down at one time, but broke off again. And this front actually was still being held into place. It looks like it was originally broke off and re-glued back on. So I will repair the front as well, but I do need to remove this so I can mount it back onto the base. Here's the rear axle. As you can see, there's a lot of rust on here. So I'm going to show you what I use to remove my rust. And I also have to try to get this piece unstuck here. It looks like it is glued on, so I will try to figure that out as well but first what i'd like to do is i'm going to repair the grill on the interior piece i'll clean this all up again get the two axle mounts back on and i'll get this ready for paint so i'd like to talk about how i'm going to do this interior now i see some people what they'll do is they will take this put it under some kind of uv light and it will kind of get the plastic looking white again i also see people put these in chemicals and i don't have none of that and i don't really want to risk putting this in any kind of chemicals so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to try to repair the dented up plastic front and the axle mounts and I will just respray this and some white paint and that'll get it looking a lot nicer and pretty safe to do. So the only part on here that really needs any repairs is the front grill, obviously, because that's stuck out. It's gotten hit up against many other things, probably 
over its years. And I'm gonna try to use to repair this first as I have some light 600 grit sandpaper. So it's really light sandpaper and won't really put any deep scratches into the plastic. And I just have a container of water here and I am gonna attempt to wet sand this front grill. And then if that doesn't do too much, I also have a light sanding block I use for a lot of different things. And I think if the wet sanding don't work, the sanding block would definitely get rid of the rest of the scratches. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wet sanding this. So after a little while of wet sanding, here's how it looks. A lot nice and smoother on the edges. I did notice there's a little indent right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of putty on and sand down before paint. But otherwise, yeah, the wet sanding cleaned it up really nice. I did use the sanding block a little on the top here because this was probably the roughest part and I got it smoothed out as much as possible. One more place right here I did notice needs cleaned up. Now that's a factory imperfection, but I am gonna try to clean that up and get it nice and smooth in the back. So here's how it looks now after I repaired that imperfection on the back. So the next thing I want to do is clean up some of this extra glue that's ran all down around the rear axle assembly. Luckily in the front there's no extra glue on the one side but back here it looks like a lot of the glue ran down all on the base. So what I'm going to use to fix this is my Dremel. This is just a battery powered Dremel 7300. I am using this bit right here which is a curved little grinding bit, not just one of the regular flat kinds or a rounded one. I'm gonna try the best I can to remove this glue residue all around here to get the base looking nice and clean again. Now it might not look exactly perfect, but it's gonna look a lot better than all this glue right here. <laughs> So I've tried my best to clean up all the glue around the broken axle mount here. And it's not perfect, but it was really hard to get all the glue grinded away around the edges here. So it's not perfect, but definitely an improvement from before. I did wet sand it a little bit as well around here so I could smooth it out a little. Still have to do a little bit more cleaning up and the primer and some new paint on top of this will also help that a little bit as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit more and I'm gonna get all the rest of the dirt washed out of this interior but first I'm gonna go ahead and remove these broken axle mounts off of the axles so I should just be able to pull these pieces out here so here is the broken piece that goes here in the front so I'm gonna have to glue this down and try to repair that as good as I can and for the back here it is rusted or glued onto this part of the axle so i'm just going to go ahead and take some pliers here and try to loosen the glue very carefully on this so i don't damage anything and here it is so this is the rear axle piece definitely going to need some cleaning up there and here is the rear axle and as you can see it is all rusted so i'm going to show you also how to clean up the axles so i've sanded up these parts a little and removed some of the glue so i'm going to go ahead and wash these with the base and then it'll be time to glue them down so it doesn't look like i can remove the wheels and tires from the axle so what i'm going to do to clean these up is i am going to just use some light sandpaper again like i've been using to wet sand the interior and I'm going to use a wire wheel on my Dremel and that should get these axles looking nice and clean. So I cleaned the axles up as good as I can right now. I am going to go back and clean these up 
again later after I'm done fixing up the rims and tires. So yeah, these definitely cleaned up pretty nice and I just need a little bit more cleaning to get out some of the imperfections and these will be good. Also, what I'm going to do to the wheels is I'm probably going to wet sand down the wheels to smooth them out. And then I'm going to end up painting the tires semi-gloss black and the rims flat white and spraying these with some matte clear coat to protect the axles from oxidizing again and make the wheels look flat like they originally did. Okay, so I cleaned the interior again, got a lot more dirt out. Before I paint it, I am going to go back with a toothpick and try to get some of the dirt out of some of the deeper areas of the base just to make sure I have a perfectly clean surface before I paint. I did go ahead and clean the wheels again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up the axles. And I notice there is a little bit of glue still on this wheel. And then I will go ahead and paint these wheels. So after a lot more filing and using some sandpaper and the sanding block, I finally got these axles to as good of a condition as I can. Now this was the axle that was really rusted and you can see there is some imperfections in it. And I have sanded these for a long Long time now and this is definitely as good as I can get them. Also when I go to matte clear coat the wheels and axles that'll protect these axles from oxidizing and rusting ever again so that'll also work out for these. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is wet sand the wheels so then I can go ahead and repaint these and get them looking nice. So what I'm going to do to paint the wheels is I need to get the rim white and the tire black, but also keep my nice polished axles. So what I'm going to do is first I am going to spray the wheels in some Tamiya Fine White Surface Primer. I'm going to mask off the axles and spray the back and front of the rims. And then what I'm going to do for the tires, paint it with some Model Master Semi Gloss Black Acrylic Paint. And then after that, I'll spray everything with some Tester's Doll Coat. And then these wheels will be looking brand new. So first what I'm going to do is mask off the axle. So what I'm going to be using for my masking tape is just some of this Tamiya yellow masking tape. I'm not sure the exact size of this. I just know this is my favorite size to use of this tape and it'll prevent most of the paint bleeding. I've had best luck with this than any other type of masking tape. So I have double layered the axles and some Tamiya masking tape to prevent any of the white primer from bleeding through. So now I'm gonna go ahead and spray the wheels and some Tamiya white primer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish working on the interior part of the Bronco. So what I need to do is repair these broken off pieces. So here is the back piece and here's the front. These must have been broken off in the past and re-glued on. Like I said earlier, I've tried my best to clean up all the glue residue around there. And now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to repair these. What I'm gonna use is just some of this Loctite gel super glue. And I'm just gonna put a little on each part, not let it all run around like it did last time. I don't know what kind of glue they used either. But yeah, I think this Loctite gel glue will work a lot better and hold them in place. And then once I'm done gluing them, I will put some Tamiya putty on on them and sand it smooth. Glued the back and front piece down. As you can see the back piece there's more of a gap between them there because of all the glue that was on the back part here but on the front it definitely does look a lot smoother. Now what I'm gonna do is after the, I let this glue cure for a few hours I'm gonna take some of this Tamiya white plastic putty and I'm going to put it around all the cracks here of the pieces I've glued and then I will also do a few repairs to the front grill as well. So after I'm done putting the putty on it I will sand it up smooth and get everything looking nice. So next up is the body of the Bronco. So as you can see, there is some red paint still left on here. So I need to make sure I can get all of this paint off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I strip the paint off something like this. Usually I'll dip a Hot Wheel or any 164 scale car into a jar. But in this situation, this is too big. So I'm going to show you what I do. So what I'm going to use to strip the paint off of this is I just use Citrus Strip Paint Stripper. I'll put a picture of what it looks like up on the screen.
You can just get it from Walmart in a big container. It's probably one of the safest paint strippers you can use, and it always pretty much works as good as it can. What I'm gonna do for this is I just have this old paintbrush here and a paper plate. I'm not gonna record it because I gotta take it outside and it's kind of messy. So I'm going to just take this outside, brush on a couple coats of the paint stripper, let it sit for a few hours, and I'll wash it off and then we can see what kind of damage and body work needs to be done. So while the body of the Bronco is in the paint stripper, let the glue dry on the broken axle tabs here that I have repaired. So like I said earlier, all I'm gonna use to repair this is some Tamiya putty. This is the white putty, which is for plastics. This is a plastic interior. What I'm gonna do to install this is I'm just gonna go ahead and take a toothpick and I will just put some of this on the toothpick and then I will put it on the areas where it needs filled. Sometimes we'll take more than one coat. We'll see how many this will take. I'm just trying to get it as best as I can. Might not be perfect, but then the, with the primer and everything, that'll also help. Then I'm also going to sand this down after the putty dries. So I'm going to let this dry overnight and I'll sand it down tomorrow. Let's go ahead and apply some of the putty onto the base. So now I've applied a thick coat of putty all around the cracks on the broken axle mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight, sand it down, see if I need to put another coat on it or anything. And if not, then this will be almost ready for paint. I've let the putty cure for another few days on the base here. And I've done a little bit of sanding. I need to do a lot more sanding here. Look over everything again. Make sure I don't need to fill anything else here on the grill. I get to do a little bit of sanding there as well. And also here is how the Bronco looks after getting out of the paint stripper. So as you can see, lots of corrosion and rust on here. The back part here, which is really smashed in, I've hit it out as good as I can. I don't want to crack the metal or break the tow hitch. So I've hit it out as good as I can, and it's definitely not as bad as it was before. And the tow hitch is a little bit more straightened. Now what I need to do is take the wire wheel, some sandpaper, the sanding block, all kinds of different things, files, and get the body of this looking as good as I can. Then I will add some Tamiya filler to like some areas like this where there's some indents there, sand it all down, and then this will be ready for paint. Now I've done a lot of grinding using just this old grinding wheel on my Dremel and filing and sandpaper all over the body of this Ford Bronco. I've definitely cleaned up a lot of the dents and imperfections in the front around the sides here, all the imperfections back here too. So as you can see, there is a lot of toning and stuff on the metal. After one or two coats of primer, this will start looking a lot better. But what I need to do first is I definitely need to fill in this area here. I need to fill in a few more dents. I gotta definitely remove the rust and then I will get ready to put the putty on it. So after applying a couple more coats of putty and sanding down the Bronco, here's how it looks. As you can see, it's all filled in there on the top and on the side here. And I also tried to repair as good as I could the imperfections all in the front. And there's a few little more things I need to fix, but otherwise the Bronco body is about ready for primer. I'm also about finished with the interior and chassis part of the Bronco. So you can see I've got putty on the broken areas here on the front and back axle mount. I tried to get these sanded down as good as I could. And otherwise, this just needs a little bit more work and the base is as good as I can get it. It's a lot better than what it was before. Then I'm gonna go ahead and spray this with some primer and then some matte clear. Here is how the wheels have turned out. Again, I've got the axles masked off and then I sprayed the entire wheel and tire assembly and some white primer and whitened up the yellowed rims like they were original. And I also had before sanded down the tires a little. These tires are still really rough. These have been very worn down. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just use some of this Tester Semi-Gloss Black on the tires with the masking tape still on, spray everything in some matte clear coat, and then I remove the masking tape. And then the wheels will be protected and look like they did original. I've finally gotten some painting done here to the Tootsie Toy Bronco. So since the last time I've showed you this, I have done some more body work. 
to the Bronco body here, and I have sprayed it in one coat of Tamiya Fine Light Gray Primer. So here's how the interior looks after two coats of Tamiya Fine White Primer. As you can see, the interior is a lot more whiter now instead of the yellowed. The front here has been all repaired and looks a lot nicer than before. As you can see, here is one of the axle mounts here that was broken, I had to repair. Um, I still am gonna give this one more coat of the, some Tamiya White Primer, and then after that, I'll be adding some Tester's Matte Clear Coat to this, and I will come back on after I've done that. Also, you can see the repairs here in the front. I remember the back here had tons of glue. As you can see, you can kind of tell where some of the glue was, and I've had to try to grind it off but this is as good as I can get it, and it's definitely an improvement from what it was before. So I think this should be nice and sturdy to hold the axles once I have this finished. And here are how the wheels are coming out so far. So I have used some of the Tester Semi-Gloss Black on the tires, so the axles are still masked off and everything. So I need to do a few more touch-ups to the tires, and then I will also be spraying these in some Tester's Matte Clear Coat, and these wheels will be finished. So here is how the interior came out now with another coat of some Tamiya Fine White Primer and one coat of Tester's Matte Clear. So now this has three coats of the Tamiya Fine White Primer. So I think the final result for the interior came out pretty good. You can barely even tell where the pillars were broken. Most of the body work has been covered up nicely, but I think this looks a lot nicer than what it was before. And for the wheels, I had touched up or closer around the wheels and on the inside of the wheels as well. Also, I have removed the masking tape and the axles still look nice and shiny silver. And then I decided to spray a coat of Tester's Matte Clear on these to protect the wheels and the axles are shiny again instead of all rusted. So now what we need to do is snap the wheels and axles back onto the axle mounts Okay, so the axles are now snapped back onto the interior. Luckily, none of the axle mounts broke. The glue and the putty must have held these together nicely. So you can see the axles can now move freely on the interior. Everything sits nice and flat, and it rolls very nice. Okay, so here is how the Bronco is now looking after it's been painted in this gloss red. I don't know how good this color is getting picked up here on the camera, but this came out very, very nice. You can barely notice any of the imperfections I had to repair on the body of this Bronco and the back that was dented in originally looks very good. So far, I've painted this in two coats of gloss red paint, and now all that's left is just the gloss clear coat. After the clear coat, I will finally get to make the decals for this Bronco, and we will be ready for the final assembly. So far, I think this is turning out pretty good, and I think this red is a very close match to what it looked like originally. Definitely a very bright, glossy, fire truck style red. The color I sprayed the Bronco in is a Tamiya Color Italian Red Spray Paint. Tamiya makes very good paint and has the best red that I've ever used. If you apply this over two coats of white primer, you get a very nice looking bright red finish and definitely looks like the real fire truck red this Bronco would have had. I originally painted this Bronco in Tamiya gray primer, but the red paint seemed to be too dark, so I ended up repainting the Bronco in Tamiya white primer. This is Tamiya's fine white surface primer that it's meant for metal and plastics. And the last thing I need to do with this Bronco before we're ready to make our decals and do the final assembly is spray it in two coats of this Tester's Gloss Clear. Okay, so we finally have the Tootsie Toy Fire Chief Bronco ready for the final assembly. This has been a lot of work over a long period of time, but I'm glad I can finally finish this restoration and get my first restoration up on my new channel. And I ended up making the Fire Chief decals, which will go on the doors of the Bronco. I originally, at the beginning of the video, said that I was going to end up making water slides for this, but I've never made water slide decals before, so I ended up photoshopping this decal and printing it on sticker backing paper. But the original Bronco actually had paper style stickers, so this was actually more realistic to do these than water slides. The only thing is that these decals are not shiny like it would have been originally, but this is, I think, a pretty good start for making decals. And last up here is how the Bronco looks after two coats of clear. This came out very shiny with two coats of Tester's Gloss Clear, and I really like how this is looking. The paint might be a little brighter than what it would have been originally, but it's definitely that fire truck red color. Some of these Broncos were painted in different shades of red. Some were a bright red and some were a darker red. I think this one was one of the darker red ones when it was new, but I really do prefer the bright gloss Italian red. So first I'm gonna snap the Bronco body onto the chassis and then I will apply the decals.
Okay, so here's the Bronco now finally assembled together. This was kind of hard to fit together, but I do remember it was hard to take apart. You never usually do see Tootsie toys that are disassembled or missing parts. That's because these are very firmly fit together or usually have crimped posts to hold them in place. So now I'm gonna go ahead here and install the decals and then we can do the final reveal. Okay, so here it is, the Tootsie Toy Bronco Fire Chief Restoration, finally complete. After a long process of making this over a long period of time, I have finally completed this restoration. This is my first video that's going to be going up on my Vintage Toy Restoration page. I also do a die-cast review page called JDM Drifter. I can put it in the description as well if you're interested in checking that out. I think this is a really cool restoration. I can put a little picture of what this looked like before and what it looks like now, and a picture of what this would have looked like somewhat original. It's very hard to find any original pictures of this online. Some decals look different sizes, some are different colors. Like I said, some of these Broncos were different colors. Tootsie Toy had done many variations of this Bronco, and this is the only variation I've ever found. Some of these Broncos also had trailers to go with them. That's why these have a trailer hitch on the back. This Bronco originally had an axle mount broke, yellowed plastic, the axles were rusted, and the back end of this Bronco was slightly dented in. This also had a lot of imperfections, and this in the end definitely came out better than what it would have been new. The white is definitely brighter now that it's been painted. The red is definitely brighter, and the decals look way nicer. Overall, I think this is a really cool restoration. I have a lot more restorations that'll be coming up soon. I would definitely recommend restoring a Tootsie Toy product if you're getting into restorations or wanting something simple to start out with. These are a very basic car, like in this case, you didn't have to drill it apart or glue anything together. But I'm going to go ahead and put this here on the turntable, and then that'll be about it here to my first restoration. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the restoration and got some helpful tips out of this video. I'm really happy with how this came out. These results look really good, way better than what this did originally. This toy was in very bad condition when I originally got it, and I really like how it came out now. This looks better than what it would have been brand new in the store in the 1970s. It's also pretty cool that Tootsie Toy products were also made in Chicago, USA. So this is an actual made in the USA diecast. Like I said, also please go subscribe to my other YouTube channel, JDM Drifter. And please go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe for more restorations in the future. I would definitely appreciate it since I'm starting out here new on this channel. So again, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.